Hello, I'm Jason with CodeLearner.com. Welcome to Mastering Java. Here we're going to talk about Java terminology. We really need to build a foundation on some common terms because if I just jump right into writing code with you, then I start talking about methods and classes and you know Java virtual machines and other things. If you don't know what those things are, then you're just going to be confused. And there's no reason for that because all of the Java terminology that you need to know is very, very simple stuff. So just keep in mind that as we learn this, these, these, these terms coming up, they're all very easy, easy to learn and understand. All right, so the first thing is one thing that we've already talked about before, previous lesson, called a Java Virtual Machine. So hopefully you've looked at the previous lesson. Uh, Java Virtual Machine is the software that runs Java programs. When you compile a Java program uh, and try to run it, you really have to have this Java Virtual Machine on your computer in order to run the Java programs. We're going to do this very shortly here in the next couple of lessons and demonstrate what we're talking about. Uh, it's, it's absolutely essential. What it does is it looks at the class file that you created during the compile process and it goes line by line and it interprets everything that's in there, the bytecode, and then it executes the results. Now this Java Virtual Machine is available for all major operating systems and that is what allows you to be able to take the Java programs, the class files, and distribute them and have them run everywhere is because we have these JVMs for all operating systems. Now another uh, definition that I want you to understand is something called a Java development kit. It's exactly what it sounds like it might be. What it is is the Java development kit, which is free, is uh, what contains the Java compiler and it also contains a Java virtual machine so that you can run your programs. So what you do, uh, and don't do this yet, but you can download the Java development kit uh, at the link there uh, in the slide from Oracle who maintains the Java platform. So in a subsequent lessons, I'm going to show you exactly how to go get it, exactly how to install it, and exactly what it means. So if I were you, I'd just wait a little bit before you actually try to download it, but there is the link right there to do so. Now the next thing I want to talk about is something called an integrated development environment. Right, so we already said that when we write our Java programs, they're just written in text files. So in reality, all you really need to do is have WordPad or some kind of Notepad application um, to type your Java code uh, into, and then you can use the Java Development Kit to compile them and run them. So everything is essentially free to get started in Java, but as you know, Notepad application is a pretty boring text editor. Uh, and it's just very, very, very basic. So we have these integrated development environments, which basically is a program that we use to type in the source code. It's basically a text editor, but it gives us color coding of words and phrases. So like if we're, if we're defining variables, for instance, it might highlight it for us. If we make an error, it might tell us, and so on. It makes it easier to write your programs because it helps us catch errors and write code faster. So this integrated development environment uh, it's not really necessary, but we're going to use it. In this course, we're going to use a free IDE called Eclipse. It's a, it's a very powerful, professional-level Java um, IDE. You can get it at the link shown on your screen there uh, from Eclipse.org. And you can see, I put the picture here only to show you, it kind of looks like a word processor. You have like a center screen where you type your code and you can barely make it out, but you can see that there's some color in here and it tries to make your code a little bit easier to read. Although you can write your entire program in notepad, I mean, just having black and white text is going to make your code very hard to read. So using an IDE makes it easier to read and easier to catch errors because of that. And so I'll show you how to install that and use this in just a few minutes and a few lessons. Now, a couple of other definitions that are actually really, really important to understand before we write any code is uh, one of them is called a method in Java. Uh, if you have a Java book, you know, any kind of Java book, you're going to read about Java methods here and Java methods there, and it's not clear what that is. When you see somebody talk about a Java method, it is the same thing if you've programmed in C. It's the same thing as a function in C or C++. Um, which is also the same thing as a subroutine. If you've ever heard of that in terms of programming language, it's a subroutine. And if I had to define a method or a function or a subroutine, which is all the same thing, it is a block of code that's designed to perform a task. You see, you don't need to have very many methods or subroutines in your programs. I mean, you could just have the one main method uh, or the one main subroutine to execute your programming, uh, your programs that you want to do. 
but eventually your program will get complicated and you might need to compartmentalize blocks of code that make sense they're performing different functions so for instance let's say I have a program and I want to use this program to average two numbers together right very simple mathematical average you add the two numbers you divide by two right so I could do it all in one spot in my in my program but I might want to create a method which is a subroutine to calculate the average of the two numbers and then that method might return the answer to the whatever other part of the code is uh, printing the answer on the screen let's say so I may use this method I may pass the two numbers to the method that I want to average so I literally tell the method what two numbers to work on and then the method also you know called a subroutine um, adds the numbers and divides by two so it's calculating the result and then the method returns the answer to wherever it was called from in the program so up here at the top you may have your main method where the program execution starts and then you may jump down to the averaging method and pass it the two values that you're averaging together the the method down here calculates the average and then returns the result back up to where it was called from um, for very simple programs like this not too important to have uh, separate methods for everything but for more complicated programs I think you might agree you might have a method to draw triangles on the screen you might have a method for adding long list of numbers together you might have another method for if you're writing a game to take the keyboard input and then move the character around the screen you're, you're gonna have methods for all kinds of things in Java so when you see the word method you just need to think of it as a little compartmentalized section of code that you write that does something and it is the same thing as a subroutine it's the same thing as a function in other programming languages all right now the most important method in Java is that the program starts executing with what we call the main method so every single Java program that we write is going to have a main method now when the program starts the Java virtual machine it looks for the main method and it begins executing at the top of the main method once the main method is done executing the program just stops it's over so you start at the entrance of the main method and then you go to the end and when you get to the end of it you're done and everything that needs to happen inside this program really needs to happen inside that main method now you can call other methods which are subroutines from the main method so you might pop down here and and do a task and then pop back into the main method but essentially every program starts with a main method and that's what I'm trying to to tell you here so keep that in mind when we write our very first Java program I'm going to be talking about methods you need to be thinking of of these little compartmentalized chunks of code the most important one of which is called main and every Java program in this class is going to have a main method which is where the program begins executing all right another thing we need to talk about again terminology is called a class or classes in Java what do we mean by that a class is a blueprint from which other objects are created so the word objects I've used here you may have heard of the the term object oriented programming language well Java is an object oriented programming language and so because of that we have these things called classes so for example the easiest way to illustrate what a class is is by an example if I'm writing a program that you know keeps track of different types of cars let's say I'm writing I don't know some kind of database or something that keeps track of cars I may you know want to create a car class because it's easier to define what a car is one time and then use that over and over and over again so for instance I could define a car class and I could say okay this car class is gonna have a certain size which might be a variable we'll talk about those later I may define the wheel size the color the speed of this car I may have tons of other attributes all defined with regard to this thing we're calling a car class because car is like a general object we know that there's all kinds of different cars in the world there's fast cars there's slow cars there's certain kinds of cars that we call you know trucks that are different shape but basically they have four wheels and they move um, so they're they were basically one kind of super level of an object called a uh, car class but we have lots of different examples for instance I can create different instances of different types of cars in the code so if I've defined this car class I may define car number one and say it's eight feet long notice we had an attribute called size I may give the size of the wheels we said we had the wheel size here I may define the color and the top speed these are all things that we defined in our car class I may define another car with different numbers but essentially it's the same uh, information and I may define a third car that has a different length and a different wheel size and a different color and a different top speed so you see I could 
define all of these cars individually, but if I had a program that was tracking, you know, 3,000 type 3,000 cars, it doesn't make a lot of sense to define all this stuff every single time. I might as well just create a class and then create an instance of each of these different kinds of cars. It keeps your code cleaner. You can reuse things in the code a lot more efficiently when you have these things called classes. So we're going to talk a whole lot more about classes later. It, don't get too bogged down in this. You don't need to really understand the details of the classes too early, but I wanted to introduce it as a, as a top level you know, discussion point. You know, the biggest reason I really introduced it at all is because in Java, you have to define at least one class in every single Java file, and I'll show you where, what it is. Um, and that is the Java file name, the name that you name the file name, it must match the, the parent class that's inside the file. So don't worry too much about it now, but just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Here in a minute, I'm going to show you, we're going to type our first Java program in. We're going to name this Java program, let's say, you know, Jason Gibson Java. Well, if we open this file, we're going to have to define the, pro the class inside of it as Jason Gibson, a class called Jason Gibson and inside that class is going to contain our program. So keep all of that in mind. I know it's a lot of information up front and it's difficult to visualize what a lot of this stuff is, especially with the class here I'm talking about, without seeing an example. Just keep it in your mind and very shortly we will create our first program and you'll see exactly what we're talking about. This is not hard stuff, but I wanted to illustrate it for you here. So follow me on to the next lesson. We're going to begin to install the Java Development Kit install the Eclipse editor, start writing our very first simple Java programs and building our skills step by step.